All right, let's see, get, get the agenda here. Just run around. One second, please. Got one minute. Just, get, just run real fast. To uh, open the meeting at 7:05, and before I discuss the agenda this evening, as you as you're well aware, all the memberships were in pink. They look beautiful, and that's in our remembrance of the uh, relative of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I lit a candle, you know. To I lit a candle. Obviously, some, you know, somewhere along the line, someone has lost somebody to breast cancer. I'm sure within this room, and people that are watching, and within the streets, and on a personal level, I lost my mother to breast cancer at age 42, and that woman worked tirelessly. Three waitress jobs, Rocco's Restaurant, Yee's Drive-In, and Woodside's Restaurant before it was known as Lucci 129. And it just, you know, just thought that would uh, it's touch our souls, touch our bodies. Everyone here is that Lou, Lou and everyone here, you know, that uh, touch us one way or another. So just want, in memory of them and, you know, in, in honor of their memory. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. All right. Transmitting of the treasury warrants. Now I need to put glasses on. Transmitting of the Treasury Warrants 13, 13A, 14, 14A, 15, and 15A. Is there a motion? Move the warrants read by the Chairman. Second. Motion made by Selectman Newhouse, second by second, uh, uh, Selectman Samagli. All those in favor? Unanimous. Approval of minutes of September 9, 2013. Motion to approve is submitted. <coughs> second. 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 Motion made by Selectman Samagli, a second by Selectman O'Connell. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, our first appointment, Teresa Marciello, Director of the Elderly Services, relative to fuel assistance and Leahy Clinic grant. Good evening, Teresa. Why don't you come up? Terry. I thought I'd be official and call you by your natural name, right? Thank, Thank you so much for having me here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, this year, uh, for the fuel assistance, um, there has been a bit of a change in the sense that um, Actually, before uh, the government shutdown, there was the, um, oh goodness, sequest uh, sequestration. Yes. And um, because of that, uh, the fuel assistance um, program had a bit of a change. Um, the community team works, they're actually their um, staff declined. They have three staff to do all these applications uh, for the entire. Uh, for the entire area, including including Wilmington, and so what they decided to do to make not make have all these applications coming in so quickly, that is the renewal applications um, for oil, um, kerosene, propane, and wood. They sent out the renewal applications in September for gas and electric. They'll be sending uh, the renewal applications out in November, and then in December. Um, the heat that's included in rent. And the reason that they broke it up that way is because oil, of course, uh, with gas as of November 1st, anyone over the age of 60, and there's also for, for children too, that they cannot shut your oil, I mean your um, gas off, um, so they'll be able to do that payment. But with oil, obviously when you run out of oil in your tank, you need immediate gratification to keep it, keep it going. Um, so that's why oil is first. Then heat included within the rent, um, that's also just like the previous that I spoke. So that's why they broke it up in that fashion. I actually met with Community Teamworks um, a couple of weeks ago. They are, um, they are in a bit of a, of a jam getting, uh, trying to get these applications processed um, and also extremely fearful that if with the government shut down, if things don't uh, work out by the end of the month, they really can't even promise that their office will be opened. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of things happening at this office. At the same time, they usually by uh, usually by now, if not next week, we usually know what the benefit level is for the oil, um, and they haven't come up with that um, as at this time. Um, so that we should be hearing soon. But th the guess is it's probably going for people with oil. Um, it's probably going to be a tank full of oil. Um, so in saying that, the process for application is that actually as of for this month right now for renewals, we actually have done around 20, 22, 25 renewals just for this month, considering today is only the 15th. Uh, we've done quite a few renewal applications for October. For September, we did around 15. Um, 
And what the, the renewal process is a little changed this year as it's great to be talking um, to the public at the same time because they only have to worry about putting their income information in before it was your oil bill, um, the electric bill, um, and several other, other things. Right now, for renewal, you only have to put in your income, which is very helpful to people. That's your monthly income, which usually is Social, social Security and pension. Um, and then if, you, if there's any annuities or IRAs. Um, so the renewal application is a little bit easier this year. For new applicants, we do have the new applications at the Senior Center at this time. Um, but again, the, the program itself does not start till November 1st. Anyone 60 or over gives us a call and we, uh, the application has to be done in person. Um, so they need to bring proof of income property tax, their oil company or gas company, whoever they, they work with. Um, oh gosh, property tax, oh, checking, checking account statement. Um, and we put this all together and, that, and some, for some people we do need their tax, last year's tax statement. Um, for one person, uh, the income level is uh, $32,065. For two, for two family uh, household, the, the income is $41,932. For three people, it's $51,798. And for four people, it's $61,664. Um, all this information is at the Senior Center. I did, um, when it was time for our uh, town topics, some of the information I didn't have at hand, uh, but I will be putting it, uh, I'm just kind of waiting for the benefit level uh, to be able to publish it in the paper so people can kind of have an idea of that too. Um, but I will be putting it in the local newspaper. If anyone has any questions, we really assure them to please call. We actually have gotten um, quite a few calls and quite a few people that we just need to reassure that, you know, let's just go through the process. It'll probably take a little more time, but I, you know, I think things, things will work out. Um, but when it comes to heating, I mean, it, that's, that's tough. Uh, we've been very fortunate with the recent weather. Hopefully it will continue like today. Um, but that's, that's uh, pretty much with the fuel. The th now that's, co that's through community teamworks and that income level. If someone is over this income level, there's also the Salvation Army um, that you can apply for. That comes at a later date, if I remember. It's December 1st, if I remember, Lou. It's December 1st. Um, but that's for people that are over, over the income level that don't fall into the um, Community Teamwork Fuel Assistance Program. This year also, we usually have the Joe Kennedy um, program that helps. There has been no discussion at this time whether that there's been some complications with working out a contract and an agreement with the people. So there has been, um, it's been kind of quiet about that. So I'm not really sure if that, that would usually start December 1st. Last year it started later. So we're really not sure what's going to be happening with that. Um, I wish I could give more information for that, but I can't. But once I do, um, it will be publicized. Um, we do, again, we do have quite a few people in the town of Wilmington um, that do receive assistance. Anyone that is under the age of 60 is uh, referred to the Bill Rick of Veterans um, Office. But there are some situations where their office is a little overloaded and sometimes we do do uh, home visits for them to help out that office too. Um, the great thing about helping and being the town being active, again, this is all volunteer. The town isn't supplemented or anything by doing this program, but there's a lot of positives in, in the town and we are continuing to support this program and helping with the applications. A couple of things are uh, people, if they're applying for fuel, there may be other things that they, are, they need, whether it be tax exemption, that type of thing that they could be eligible for that they're unaware of. It could be their health insurance situation where they're not even aware that they have some benefits that they can, thinking that they don't have the money to cover the cost, but we do have shine counselors that these people um, specialize in insurance benefits and can really sit down and talk to them with that. 
Some people are very embarrassed of the fact that they don't have food and in introdu introducing them to the fact that there is a food pantry in town and that it's not as difficult as they think to get involved in that. Um, so there are quite a few uh, different things that we can get involved in with people that's not intrusive, but they came to us with the fuel we can offer um, some situations. So I think it's, it's really important that um, I think it's a wonderful program. Yes, it, it adds a lot to the department. It's, it's a little busy at times, but you know what? In the end, it's, it's, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. I know Lou can answer that to that with the, um, with the busyness for fuel, but I think, I think uh, it's really worth it. Um, are there any questions that you might have or anyone that, that's mentioned anything you in town about the fuel program or? Thank you, Terry. I'll go to the membership. Uh, you mentioned Lou earlier. Lou? Yeah, I just want to say, Terry, the services that you pro provide through your office are immense, not just the fuel assistance, but everything you do. And you're right, a lot of the benefits kind of co-mingle. And when you have somebody there with their Social Security Awards letter, the pension letters, everything they need, they, they are, we find a lot between departments that are eligible for other benefits. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and that's big. And this. Obviously, this time of year, this is a big issue with the heat, but there are a lot of people that are really in need mm -hmm. um, right now. So I thank you for the services that you provide beyond fuel assistance, but especially for fuel assistance. Thank you. Uh, the only comment I would make is, is really directed at the general public that I've heard uh, Terry make the point in the past, I've heard Lou make the point in the past. If you see somebody that you think is in need, don't hesitate to call town hall called the senior center called uh, Terry or Lou, um, you know, any number of folks uh, in town government who, you know, are more than capable and willing to uh, reach out and try and make sure that somebody doesn't have a need that's, you know, that's, uh, that's an emergency type situation. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that uh, you can do all the outreach in the world, but it's not going to be as helpful as a neighbor who's mm -hmm. uh, trying to be helpful. Very good point. Thank you, Mike. Anybody else? I think all the points have been made, but I just wanted mm -hmm. to say thank you very much as well. I certainly watch your meetings online uh, and on TV when I can. And, um, you know, I think obviously you've addressed all of the highlights of the program, and I appreciate you being here tonight. I think with uh, what's been going on in the governmental climate, I think people are concerned overall about any aid or services that are out there, and this is obviously one of them that, mm -hmm. you know, with what's going on, um, how is that going to be impacting their day-to-day -day life and will there be delays? Um, but, you know, hopefully things will be worked out and help will be on the way soon and, and you can resume your normal course of business and get the aid out to the people that certainly are most worthy and deserving of it. So thank you for being here. Yeah, I mean, it's really all been said. Uh, you know, the, the uh, thank you. For, for not just a fuel assistance, it's really all the services you provide through the entire year, you, in, through your office. And, um, you know, you just, I think, I said it in a different context earlier today, but you don't know what you don't know. So I can imagine some of the folks that might be uh, interacting with you, asking a question specifically about maybe this program, wouldn't know to ask the questions mm -hmm. about some of the other programs that are available. And so that's such a value-added service, just having their hand held and maybe introduced to some of the other services. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really want to uh, commend you for taking that uh, extra step and ma making sure that folks are getting access and having questions answered, maybe even questions they didn't know they had. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's uh, again, it's th this federal shutdown, government shutdown thing rears its ugly face right on the streets of uh, right here in, in Little sure Wilmington. I think we, we see all the national broadcasts talking about shutdowns of national parks and some of these other things. It doesn't feel like it has a direct impact on our lives, and here it does. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that we can see some good results come out of, uh, out of Washington soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shampoo. I know it's all been said, but Terry, you know, I'm out in the community as you, and I hear nothing but praise relative to the job you do. You do an outstanding job with our seniors, with the Meals on Wheels, and relative to the assistant program and the Leahy Clinic Award, uh, Grant Program. And I got to tell you, you're an asset to this community. And Thank Jeff, you. you have a really great department head sitting right over there, and I think you know that. And uh, you do an outstanding job, time and time and time again. I want to thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure that in the whole memberships express how grateful they are the job you. that you do. And people, you know, that obviously out in the community, they may not be involved as much or see as much what goes mm -hmm. on. But, you know, when it comes to the senior citizens, you do a great job. And Lou, with his assistance and helping with the mm -hmm. veterans and the uh, seniors team. relative to veterans, you know, it really means something in this community. And I want to thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering if I could just give you one more piece of actually good news. 
Um, yes. Yes. We, we need to, I always no. like, if we meet, I, I, I think it's so important to leave on a high note. Um, and that is actually, uh, thank you, actually segued into it as to um, the Leahy Community uh, Benefits Grant. Uh, we actually applied for another grant this year uh, for our exercise programs, and we, with the changes with what's going on with Leahy, it was kind of uncertain whether we were going to be getting um, a grant, and I can happily say we got $5,200 to continue one of our, um, our I called it an SPF, which is um, Strength, Balance, and Flexibility um, program that we do run uh, with a certified teacher. So. I just want to end on a high note that, yes, Leahy Clinic once again supported us and actually are supporting us through a, uh, an additional program that is going on right now free of charge. Also, it's for falls, pre fall prevention. It's an evidence-based program. It's a six-week program, and um, th the fact that it's no charge, and uh, we really weren't sure how many people were going to, um, you know, up to opt to do this. Well, there were 43 people. There are only 15 people that are allowed in the class because it's really an intensive type class. So uh, now that uh, Leahy did agree to continue and expand the class, so this is probably going through the first of the year. So that was also very good news. So just wanted to end it on a, on a good note. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Jeff, uh, communications, please. <clears throat> First item on the agenda under communication is a memo from Tina Stewart, uh, and I'll just uh, uh, read it. Uh, According to the Pew Internet and American Life Project recent survey, Americans say libraries are important to their families and their communities, but often do not know all the services libraries offer. Fully 91% of Americans age 16 and older say public libraries are important to their communities, and 76% say libraries are important to them and their families, and libraries are touch points in their communities for the vast majority of Americans. 84% of Americans age 16 and older have been to a library or bookmobile at some point in their lives, and 77% say they remember someone else in their family using public libraries as they were growing up. Still, just 22% say they know uh, all or most of the services their libraries offer now. Another 46% say they know some of what libraries offer. 31% say they know not much of or nothing at all of what the, their libraries offer. In the past years, Wilmington Memorial Library has focused on improving our marketing initiatives in order to make Wilmington residents more aware of the wide variety of services offered by our library. I'm writing to inform you that with the support from the Friends of the Library, we will be using the billboard on Route 38, uh, traveling north just before the traffic lights at Route 38 and 62. The message on the billboard, uh, Why Buy, communicates how using library saves money. A copy of the billboard, uh, which will be uh, up during the month of November, is enclosed uh, with this memo. So uh, Tina had talked to me about this, um, I guess, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. The idea of uh, using the uh, billboard uh, at that location to uh, promote the library services, uh, I, I told her I thought it was a good idea uh, in terms of providing uh, marketing, if you will, of, of library services and getting the word out about the fact that it is more than uh, uh, just a repository for books. And clearly, as the uh, internet age is changing and we have Kindles and so on. The library uh, has had to evolve, and I think Tina has really been a master at being able to um, mold the library into uh, more current uses. So uh, this, uh, this initiative is, uh, will cost $2,000, uh, a thousand of which is being uh, uh, donated by the Friends of the Library, and a thousand dollars is coming from a, a grant that the library has. So uh, I think it's a positive for the library. Very good. Uh, the board uh, received correspondence from uh, Boston Lo uh, regarding Boston Logan Airport's noise study. Uh, it r indicates that phase two of their uh, noise study was completed. 
uh, and phase three was kicked off uh, beginning in August of 2013. The goal is, is to identify ways to further reduce noise to communities surrounding Logan. Uh, the efforts involve the FAA, Massport, Logan Airport uh, Community Advisory Committee, and the phase three scope of services is available online uh, at www.bostonoverflightnoisestudy.com uh, backslash phase three. Communities are offered an opportunity to designate a representative to serve on their on this community access uh, committee. We have correspondence from the uh, MBTA advisory board uh, and this is uh, announcing the 2013 uh, Boston Regional Metropolitan Planning Organization election for two seats. Uh, Joseph uh, Karen uh, Karatoten, the mayor of Somerville, is running for the inner core uh, committee subregion, and Dennis uh, Giambetti is the who is the chairman of the uh, Framingham Board of Selectmen is running for the Metropolitan uh, West Regional Collaborative subregion. Uh, both of these seats are uncontested. Uh, absentee ballots are due in on the 29th of the month, and the election is on uh, October 30th. <clears throat> uh, we received good news uh, from the Department of Revenue uh, based upon the unaudited balance sheet uh, for the Town of Wilmington. Our free cash has been certified at 14 million. $190,939. Uh, this represents an increase of almost uh, $3 million over the fiscal 12 number. Uh, and so this is, uh, again, a reflection essentially of uh, when uh, budgets, when expenditures uh, do not match uh, or fall short of the uh, appropriation for particular line items, and there's essentially excess money available in a particular budget. Uh, that excess money goes into free cash. Uh, it also is a consequence of uh, really conservative estimates on our revenues. So when revenues exceed uh, the expected revenues or the budgeted revenues, that also generates free cash. Uh, as you know, uh, we will be uh, recommending uh, that uh, free cash uh, be used for the purchase of the uh, uh, St. Dorothy's uh, church property at the upcoming special town meeting. Uh, so this, you know, in addition to providing a, uh, a means to have a reserve account for unexpected downturns, uh, this free cash also serves as an opportunity to uh, take advantage of one-time opportunities uh, Jeff, if I can just say, that speaks volumes, what you are saying. We'll have an opportunity to purchase property from St. Dorothy's, and we have the funds to do it, hopefully with approval of town meeting. That says a lot. Thank you, Jeff. Well, we have correspondence from Jeff Beckwith, who's the executive director of the Mass Municipal Association. He's announcing the uh, upcoming 35th uh, MMA annual meeting and trade show. It's happening on January 24th and 25th in Boston. Uh, the meeting this year, the theme is building our communities, building our future. Uh, and there'll be, as you know, a number of uh, panels uh, over the course of the weekend. Uh, and the uh, leadoff speaker on uh, the, at the opening session on Friday is uh, Pulitzer Prize winning author John uh, Meacham. Uh, so that uh, uh, will be coming up on January 24th and 25th. A correspondence from Xfinity. Uh, this is concerning uh, changes in some uh, fees. Uh, the reactivation fee for services uh, will be increasing from four dollars to I'm, I'm sorry, five dollars to six dollars, uh, and the effective date on that is uh, November 1st. Uh, customers will be receiving notice in advance uh, via their uh, bills. Uh, correspondence uh, from Mary Fre Freer and uh, Jill Reddish, both from Verizon Fios. Uh, the first notice uh, references a number of different 
uh, rate changes in various FIOS offered programs. Uh, again, this I won't go through the entire list of changes, but the uh, changes are slated to take effect uh, December 1st, and uh, notice will be going out to uh, customers uh, with their uh, beginning October 1st. Uh, the second notice involves uh, changes in uh, certain uh, programs. Uh, and again, there are, there are a number of changes here. Essentially, it's a realignment of certain channels and uh, both um, news channels as well as some music channels. Uh, customers will be notified of the above changes uh, in their uh, bill going out with the November bill cycle. And we have uh, the board to consider. Uh, this is a uh, notice, a correspondence that was received from uh, about the uh, United Nations, looking for the um, uh, board to take a uh, vote endorsing a United Nations pe petition. This is from the United Nations Association of Greater Boston. Uh, so attached is a request that the Board of Selectmen proclaim October 24th, 2013 as United Nations Day in the town of Wilmington. The request was most recently considered by the Board at its October 12th, 2010 meeting, uh, and I've included the uh, brief uh, discussion from the minutes of that meeting. Uh, what I can do, Mr. Chair, uh, if you wish, is to just read the petition and then the board can consider if you want to take action. Mr. Chairman? I, yes. Uh, I have no objection to reading, but I, I can tell you I'm, I'm prepared to move that we take no action on the request. I was going to say the same thing. I don't even know if we need a motion or anything, but I just say we just take no action on it without getting into a big discussion about it. Okay. I'm in total agreement with that, so we're going to officially uh, take no action on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newhouse. Hello, everybody. That's, uh, that's it for our uh, board to consider. All right, thank you. Uh, any public comments? No public comments tonight? All right. Um, Jeff, bring us out. Uh, how about new business or committee reports? I'll start on this side of the table, Mr. Shampoo. Yeah, uh, briefly. Last Wednesday, uh, as your liaison to the Open Space Committee, mm -hmm. uh, I attended the first gathering or regathering of that committee. Um, really, uh, the intent, uh, at least the, the uh, immediate intent of that uh, of that committee or uh, our the committee is to formalize the uh, the goals and object uh, objectives uh, of the open space committee and really uh, come up with a a finite list of uh, what the committee hopes to achieve over the course of time and, and ultimately create a set of tools um, that can be used for future generations whether that be us or, or you know our, our uh, uh, successors um, to use as a bench post or a guideline in uh, working with and using the open space that's available in town. It's really uh, documenting what's available um, and uh, I think hopefully uh, creating more opportunities for the public to gain access to some of these open spaces uh, for recreational purposes or otherwise. So it's, it's interesting. I learned an awful lot. Uh, I hadn't been involved in the previous work that had gone on. By and large, uh, this I, I did come to learn that uh, the committee is making an effort to get in place uh, and a submission to um, the, uh, the State House for review and ultimately, I guess, some sort of a ratification. Uh, and by doing so, we will have to, we're really committed to try to do so every seven years. And by having that in place, um, it doesn't mean we have to live and, and abide by the guidelines in the document, but by having the document in place, it makes us eligible as a community to seek out and uh, gain access to uh, various grants. So that's really the, the impetus behind getting us to this, this point. Um, all of the con content and the discussion in it um, is valuable and hopefully will be a guideline. Um, but uh, in the end, uh, if it creates opportunities for what we do at uh, Yentile or anywhere else for that matter uh, within, uh, within the town, if there are grant opportunities, we may have not been able to have access to some of those grants 
with the absence of this uh, document being certified and in place. So that's the real first step is getting this goals and objectives document um, submitted. And there will be an open uh, process over the course of the next, uh, I say, uh, two months. Uh, there will be a series of uh, published uh, meetings scheduled for the, uh, the community to uh, come in and have their voice heard uh, and ultimately uh, have a, a voice in the creation of the final document that gets submitted to the state. So be on the lookout for more information about some of those meetings as they get scheduled. But uh, I think it's a, a healthy step towards gaining access to funding for various projects that the town may want to en engage in over the course of the next few years. Thank you, Mr. Shampoo. I don't have anything this evening. Anybody else? Uh, just one quick note uh, without my calendar in front of me. Uh, if I could just look to the manager to confirm the finance committee hearing for the special town meeting is Tuesday, October 22nd, right? Do I remember yes. that right? Okay, so just uh, kind of a public um, reminder of that, and certainly folks should feel free to come in and weigh in on uh, the purchase of St. Dorothy's and any of the other articles. Thank you. I get nothing. All right. I'm all set. Jeff, uh, bring us to uh, important dates. Thank you. Important dates. Uh, October 16th, we have a brush drop off uh, Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the um, High School Building Committee uh, will be holding its next meeting uh, on October 17th, right here in Room 9, 630. Uh, October 19th uh, and 23rd are two additional uh, brush drop off dates. Uh, the 19th is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., the 23rd. <clears throat> is 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the uh, 24th of October is the last day to register to vote for, at the special town meeting. Uh, town clerk's office will be open until 8 p.m. October 25th, the Carter Lecture Fund Committee uh, is presenting uh, squeeze box stompers at the middle school uh, auditorium uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, this is a, a band, as I understand it. Um, it's free. By and way. it's free, which is even better. Uh, October 26th, we have another brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, also on October 26th is the National Drug Take Back Day at the Public Safety Building between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. October 27th is the Horribles Parade uh, at the Rotary Park, uh, starting at the Rotary Park at 4.30, and then they proceed down Church Street. Uh, October 28th through November 30th is curbside collection of yard waste. Uh, as you know, that's an annual event, so if people have yard waste, uh, please put it out at the curb and they'll be collected. Uh, October 28th is the next Board of Selectmen's meeting here at uh, 7 p.m. October 30th is another brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, and then November 2nd is the townwide flu clinic. Uh, here in the Town Hall Auditorium, 9 a.m. to noon. Thank you. Before we adjourn, uh, once again, the Board of Selectmen will be wearing pink at our next Selectmen's meeting and uh, relative to Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I uh, would like to thank everybody showing up and have a good night. Uh, there's a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second. Se motion by Selectman Samagli, a second by Selectman O'Connor. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you.